The actor, Lionel Jeffries, has starred in well over a hundred films. And in 1970, he branched out with the popular film of The Railway Children, which he both scripted and directed himself. I went to see him at a hotel in Scarborough, which is his temporary home whilst he's on location filming. What actually brings you to Scarborough? Well, I'm working, Cliff, I'm, luckily. I'm working as a picture called uh, Chorus of Disapproval, Alan Akebourne play, with uh, Anthony Hopkins, Jeremy Irons, Richard Bryars. Very, very happy. I'm having a first week of shooting up here. So it really is the posh, posh travelling life, the travelling life for me, as you sang in that wonderful Chitty Chitty Bang well, I do a lot of travelling around, yes, that, yes. I mean, only this time last year, I was in New York with Pygmalion and Peter O'Toole, and then over across, and here we are in Scarborough. I always feel very much at home in Yorkshire. But if I were to ask you where is home, where would you tell me? Well, it's usually where I'm working, where the caravan rests. But real home, as, uh, for me, is Bournemouth. Uh, and uh, when I'm working in Ham near Hampton Court. But I, j I try and always have... I, my wife always comes around with me, and we, we make a home wherever we are. She's wonderful, a hotel room within minutes. It, it, there's magazines and flowers, and it, it's a home. How many films have you actually made? I said earlier on it was dozens. Well, some say too many. But uh, it's well over a hundred, well over a hundred. Uh, not starring in them, you know. I'm not starring. No, there's an important point. Yes, it Because is. you're very much a character actor. Is it that kind of role that you like rather than the starring role? Yes, yes. I, I learned that, I think, more in, 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 in rep. I learned what I couldn't do. And one of the things with this face, and, and having gone bald or balding in the war, I, I, I knew I wasn't the romantic leading young man. That was out. And so, if I wanted to make a living, I, I, I had to find uh, a way of earning a living, and that was uh, the rubber noses and the, uh, the character work. In Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, that was the first time I think any of us had ever heard you sing. Are you a musical man? I, I love all, almost all sorts of music. I cannot abide modern, uh, cheap music. I don't like cheap music of any sort, but. It's, Modern music, I find far too aggressive. Your music for this particular program yes. is sung by the Abbey Choir at uh, Farnborough. Well. And we're beginning with Panis Angelicus. Thank you. you very much. Wonderful.
You come from a, a Salvation Army background mm. of some depth and strength. Mm. Yes. My grandfather, Charles, uh, he helped uh, William Booth in the very early days, um, when Booth had already started the Salvation Army. My, my grandfather was a hopeless drunk down in Brixton. And uh, he uh, attacked, he, he started what was called the Skeleton Army which was an army of real yobbos at the time. I mean, sort of 18, we're talking about 1840, mm. 1850s. And, and they used to go around smashing up Salvation Army meetings, open air meetings. But one particular night in a, a brawl, and he was put into, into Brixton jail, um, and, and said to the policeman, um, are you going to leave me, let me out in the morning? He said, well, you know, if you behave yourself and you serve it up. He said, why? Well, why are you so keen to get out? I mean, other than going home. He said, oh, I'm not going home. He said, I'm going to go to, I'm going to find a Salvation Army citadel. I want to join the Salvation Army. And so there was a Salvation Army beginning for me. My father and mother were, my mother was a preacher, a very good preacher, Elsie. And my father was a good preacher as well. So all my life, were, as a boy, I was dreading Sunday mornings, really, because... You didn't like Sunday. I, I hated it. thought Sunday was the big Salvation Army day. I know it was for the grown-ups, but it, 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 was the, it was the pressure of um, Sunday school before the morning meeting, then the, the open-air meeting, then, one, then another one in the hall, then home to lunch. And my poor darling mother was the most terrible cook. <laughs> so we didn't even look forward to Sunday lunch. What about your father? What was your relationship with your father? Not good. Not good at all. Did he allow you to do childish things? Did you have toys to play with? Oh, yes. To look at and so Oh, on? yes, yes. No comics, of course. No comics. That was the Salvation Army. He went, no comics. No theatre. No, no, no going to the cinema. But he did introduce me into movies in as much as, and I can never understand it, he bought a little 9.5 Pathic camera and he bought himself a pathoscope projector. Mm. And that was his great enjoyment, and he knew an awful lot about it. So even at the age of, say, five and six Sundays, the only thing I really looked forward to on Sundays was maybe after tea for a treat. We'd run a, 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 a little half reel of an old Charlie Chaplin, and then home movies, which I helped to edit. So he taught me direction, my left and right, not crossing the line, yeah. even at the age of six and seven. So I, learnt, I was editing home stuff at the age of ten, nine. That really started you off. Yes, I got an enormous love for the smell and the feel of a bit of celluloid. Reality came to you, of mm. course, when the war yeah. came. Yeah. You left home then and yes. joined the yes. army. Yes, instead of going to school one day, I was, in, I was in the officer cadet training corps at school. And instead of going to school one day, I went the other way. Instead of to Wimborne, I went to Salisbury, presented myself to a six-foot gargantuan of a costume guards, a recruiting sergeant. Mm. Presented myself, said, I've come to join the army. Just a sort of looking for get in there. Went in, actually got the Queen's shilling, and as I was coming out, somebody called and said, are you really 16? I'm... And I wasn't, I was 15 and a half. So I did the last six months of school, actually as a soldier. <laughs> but I was still at school, I wasn't paid. And I joined the Ox and Bucks, Light Infantry. What did you take to war with you? Did you take your faith? Did um, my mother gave me a little old, a little um, New Testament, and uh, she wrote in it um, to my dear Lionel, darling, my darling boy, uh, and and always look to, and it was the the, uh, the Lord is my shepherd. She said, you just keep saying that to yourself when you're scared, and that really did. That was an enormous help to me in the war. And when I was frightened, I just m mumbled that.
When you came out of the army, mm. was it inevitable that you were going to have a stage career? Not at all, no. No. No, I, I had no idea what I was going to do. I, I, I was still in... I was, even though I'd left, I was really wondering whether I should have done because I did rather well as a soldier, mm. you know, from the age of 16. And I was, I, I was a company commander by the time I was 19 and a half, with 250 mm. people to look after. Oh, that's rather well. Yeah. In Burma, not bad. But the, the, that was um, mainly because people got killed and mm. you just were the next one up. So I do remember walking around with my mother in Bournemouth um, in a sort of, I do remember it was damn near two weeks of a sort of days. And then I couldn't understand why I'd got through. I can't, I couldn't understand what, a bout of malaria. I wasn't wounded. No. Most of my, my best friends, my, the fellows that I'd originally gone out there with were killed or died. And I just, it was almost like um, at the age of 20, what is it all about? Mm. Just as simple as that. How did you come to take up a stage career then? Um, I, I'd always, I'd always enjoyed making people laugh, but that was my defence at school. I was appalling at everything, but I could make people laugh, and I, and I used that. So, I met somebody. He was the manager of the Odeon Leicester Square, and, and he had been in the army, and uh, he said, "What are you going to do with this?" And I said, no, "I'm going to leave. And I, I'm going to leave the army. I, I'm not going to stay." Silly of me, but I. I and he said, you know, you could make, I think you could make a living. He said, I, I saw you um, making some people laugh one night. Why, did why didn't you try it? And I applied to go to the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art, which he, he said, well, why did you do it? Uh, I, 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 I really didn't think for one moment I'd get in. And I did the um, audition piece. Appalling, absolutely mm -hmm. appalling, a piece of Shakespeare. But it made Sir Kenneth Barnes and the others laugh. After Rada? After Rada, I made a movie in the last term of Rada. Hitchcock made a movie called Stage Fight. Oh, uh, well. with Marlene Dietrich, Michael Wilding, Richard Todd, and it was set in at the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art. And in my class was Pat Hitchcock, who was Hitchcock's mm. daughter, and he said, "Go on, Patty, find some people to be in the picture for this particular sequence." And um, that was the first movie, Stage Fight, and I got a smell for the inside of a studios. I just thought, yeah. this is it. Not the theatre. I didn't long for the theatre. But I did get, went up to um, um, Litchfield Rep in, in, in Staffs, did uh, two years there, weekly rep. Wonderful training, mm -hmm. wonderful training. 37 years ago, mm -hmm. you married your wife Eileen, Eileen and you yeah. met at RADA. Yes. She was an Irish Catholic. Was it because she was an Irish Catholic that you became converted? I'd never met, I don't think I'd ever met a Catholic girl. That, I, I, I know I'd never met a Catholic girl. But I had an uncle, Lionel, who I'd been named after, who was the only one of the family who'd ever done the big E. Mm. <laughs> I left a very, very heavy Protestant family, Salvation Army, and he'd become a Catholic. And I think possibly the combination of Eileen and what she was and the fact I loved her and the, she came up there to be in Weekly Rap as the leading lady. And one day, I didn't, it wasn't, just said, I think I, I'll find out a bit more about it. I presented myself to the presbytery of a funny little Catholic church in Litchfield, still there, knocked on the door, and a wonderful looking fellow appeared at the door. And I said, he said, oh, hello, Lionel, because he knew I was in the weekly rap. He said, hello, Lionel, what can I do for you? And I said, well, Father, I said, I want to become a Catholic. And he looked at me and he said, well, what makes you think we want you? <laughs> hello, that'll do me. I rather like that for a start. Now let's come to your third piece of music. What's that to be? Well, it's Soul of My Saviour. And... Uh, when I was first asked to do the programme, I said, we've, I've, we've got to have that. We've got, just got to have it. It's, it's not only my favourite, possibly my very favourite hip. It's certainly Eileen's. My two daughters had the, uh, their weddings as well. And I, I think without sounding too um, s totally sloppy, it makes me cry. I love it. <laughs>
chairman, aren't you, of the Catholic, Catholic, Stage, of the Catholic, Catholic Stage, Stage Guild. Guild. What does the Guild do? It's to help young actors or young young technicians, any any Catholic in in our business, any any in any in any uh, department, uh, who has a bad is having a bad time, that we might be able to help, in any form, um, legal help, finding an agent. But it's not only the youngsters, not only those at the stage schools. Um, it might be a Catholic actor who's having a, t a terrible time, maybe suicidal. And we want to let him know that there are friends who will understand him, and there will always be someone to, to for, there'll be an ear for him. I've only just remembered, uh, it's just come to me when you were talking then, that you were involved in a drama with a motor car that went over the edge of a quay that began to sink. Yes, yes. And you only got out very much... The last yes, second. Yes, yes, it was. It was what were very, your thoughts then? Uh, pretty um, hairy. I think I'm more frightened than I was of anything else in the war. There's nothing worse. I understand, and I now know, that if you're locked in a car, number one, that's bad. If it's on fire and you can't get out, and I've already had that experience about 11 years ago. I was in a car that was on fire on a film. I couldn't get out, and the props boys came in. Mm. But in this particular case, I was in a car. The door was jammed. The window was jammed, and I was sinking in water. And I did really. I went. I went. I went under. Some people say they see you, all your past life flash before your eyes. Did it? No. A lot of old movies flash. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly failures. <laughs> no. I really. I honestly thought that was it. Uh, but it was. It was most extraordinary. I. I, I when you say I thought that was it, it yes. did you did you really think that yes. your moment had come yes. that you were about to die? Absolutely, yes. There was no doubt in my mind. I, I, in I was going, this is it. And at that time, the water was here, and I was still there. And then the next thing was there, and I took one enormous gulp of breath. And I was going to say someone was with me. God. I swear it was God with me because I turned involuntarily without thinking like that and pushed myself out of the top of a window, which I tell you was no wider than that. You didn't have time then not to pray, no. to issue a little prayer? No, no time at all. No, 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 no time at all. Mm. You're, I gather, a very strong believer in the power of prayer because yes. you, you, you talk about it yes. quite a lot. Yes. Because in my experience, I've never known it to fail. Uh, whatever the, the problem I have had or the family's had, or, it, it's always the answer to it has manifested itself in some way, not perhaps the way I've expected it. I mean, that's been said a million times, I know, before. But in my case, uh, there's a very short prayer that I, my family, all the family say, and it's just to look quietly in your own head and say, Lord, I am a vessel. I, I, I'll use my talents the best that you've given me, the best I possibly can, and it's entirely up to you, but you know exactly I needed whatever it was, to, to job or need to think something to go right. I'm a, a vessel. And that, Cliff, I promise you, works. If you really mean it, it works. <laughs>
Do you I, miss the Latin oh, Mass? Oh, miss it like mad. You see, somebody said, don't, don't, pull a, don't pull a fence down until you find out why it was put there in the first place. And I think that applies to the dismissal of, of the Latin. I think it, some of the ritual, the, one, the fact that we don't have Compline anymore at the end of Mass. Wonderful. The elevation of the, the host on, you know, on a Sunday evening. I used to love that. And did you like the ritual of everything. the ceremony? Absolutely everything. The theatricality yes, of it? Yes, because I think, I mean, if you come to dinner with me at my home, I do the best to make, and Eileen will make the house look as nice and the tablecloth and the candles and the right wine for you, make sure that the best we can for a friend. Now, if you're going to invite, if you're going to a so-called God's home, as far as I'm concerned, we voluntarily, and, and I willingly, want that to look the best I can for God. I want the church to look wonderful. I want, I want it to look different. I don't want to hear mass in a garage. Has retiring ever entered your thinking for one split second? No. Giving it all up. When, when it's being in a play that you, that's not particularly successful, or a part that you don't, I don't particularly like, or a movie that you thought was going to really take off and it didn't, don't you think, oh, no, no. I think I'll pack it up, do something else. But in all honesty, I wouldn't know what else to do. I'm happiest working. I think I would, I think I, I don't want to pack it up and mow the lawn and throw rocks at the seagulls at Boscombe Pier. I, I, I want to work. I How do you I, amuse yourself? Any, anything to do with the family, for me, is amusement. Phone calls, I've got two wonderful daughters and a very funny son, and my children on the phone, who we, we keep in contact with no matter where we are. And it's always the most hysterically funny phone call, no matter what it is. Mm. Timothy's wonderfully funny. Are you a good grandfather? I hope so. I hope so. I, I don't particularly enjoy being old or getting old, no. And, I'm, and sometimes it does shake me when either Amy or Thomas, my two grandchildren, try to have grandpa, grandpa and I, I almost have a look around to see who they're talking about. What hopes do you have for your children and your grandchildren? What kind of a world do you hope that they will inherit? Well, a peaceful world, a world of love, people where the word hate is out the window. No, I, I can't see that happening. But the, the thing is, there is hope. If, if there is such, if there is God and Jesus Christ, which I believe obviously there was, then there's hope. If there is no God and there was no Jesus Christ, then there is no hope. But as there was a God and there is Jesus alive, then there's hope. It's for them. They'll decide what's, what's ahead. What then do you say to people who are not Christians who say, why don't all you Christian churches get together Abs and begin that movement? Absolutely right, and they are right. Let's consider the things that we have in common. We've all got one thing in common, and that is we believe in an omnipotent being in, in God. Donald Jeffries, thank you very much indeed for being home on Sunday. And we will end with the church's one foundation. Thank you, Cliff. Thank you for asking.